Hey, welcome back everybody to another video. Today, I'm gonna be collecting some scrap steel. I'm building a small engine, engine stand. These. And I'm gonna show you guys some technical information for making a small engine stand that's universally long. So we got the steel. I'm gonna set it out in front of the shop and uh, blow it out. Okay, I'm gonna adjust on uh, on this here. I'm gonna have to loosen all of that. I'm loosen it, set it at zero degrees again. Uh, I was cutting it because the whole reason I had it at 45 degrees was because I already built some of the stand here. You want this to be at level with either your waist or just below it. Um, I didn't do exact measurements. All I know is I believe that's 30 inches tall. And then these are the 45 degrees right here. Um, they're two corner holder post things to hold this side from wiggling around too much. This thing is going to be a two-piece stand, so I'll explain by hopping right over there. So basically, um, it's going to be a two-piece stand. The engine is going to go right in the center give you a good top down here. It's gonna go right in the center, like that. There's gonna be this front piece right here. This is gonna be in the front with a bolt pattern set up for um, the multiple bolt patterns of lawnmowers, because um, if you didn't know, lawnmowers have almost the exact same bolt pattern. Uh, it's gonna have one here in the front, one here in the back. They're gonna be separate and they can be slid closer to each other or further away from each other to adjust for the size of the engine depending on what kind of engine you're working on. If you want to work on Predator engines or something like that, um, or small Briggs, you can adjust this to do that and then put weld on new tabs so you have multiple bolt patterns. A super modular system. So now I'm gonna get to work on doing this long piece. So uh, of course the size of the wrench matters here. Uh, you got two different sizes. I'm not sure what they are because you can always use um, a crescent wrench. You just wanna get up to it and just and you just want to do this as many times as you think you need. There is a lock nut for this. All right, I think that's that's probably good. Now we've got to this point. We're gonna essentially take this row right here, go down to our little angle finder, and get it until it reads dead zero. You literally just take this one and slide it, and then just crank it down. And normally, you, the best way to do this, in my opinion, tighten this first. And then once you have this nice and tight, and this is still loose, you just crank it flush, just like that, and then tighten it, and you got pretty much two zeros. When you're cutting stuff like this, you are gonna have to make quite a few adjustments to your shop positioning, because <laughs> I've had to pull this out quite a ways. Uh, I'm gonna cut it as dead center as I can. I'm gonna take some measurements of how long this thing actually is. I'm gonna get it dead centered, cut it straight in half, and then take one side for the other base of that setup and the rest of the metal for those uh, side posts right there. Okay, I've got center to center marked up. I got center here, um, center marked right over there. Should be pretty simple, I think, anyway. Okay, making sure to be safe, I'm gonna Go ahead and fire this up and then hold this end down here. I'm gonna lift it up, fire it up, and hold it. Yeah, I did some verification and it is indeed 30 inches for the height of the stand. So, put a mark on 30 and this may end up actually being perfect. This could end up being the second base. So I'm going to cut this side uh, to 30, stick it on there and start doing some triangulation and whatnot. Okay, let's stick that. 
right about there. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna tack that up, see what it looks like. And then once I got that on there, I'll start doing the triangulation pieces. Okay, I got the magnet in place. I'm gonna go ahead and tack that up. I'll set you up on a camera view that can see that. Welding gloves, wherever those are. Sometimes welding gloves are just like 10 millimeter sockets. I'll cut back to you when I find them. And then I'm gonna make the uh, eight inch braces that'll go onto this and make it this song. See the difference here, folks? This wouldn't hold a 10 horsepower engine. This, this will hold a 10 horsepower engine or above. To make the eight inch braces, um, you just cut a big long piece of metal into an eight inch piece. I'll teach you exactly what I did over there for this, because of course you guys probably wanna know I did it. So we'll start with what I started with first. First things first, grab your tape measure. Tape measure to hold itself. Once you got the tape tediously balancing on there, you just grab your bright mark marker, go to the eight inch mark, make a little mark and then take the tape off. Try another one, but I'm gonna actually count another eight. And uh, what I'm gonna do is draw lines up here. Once I take the tape measure off and then cut Now what I like to do is um, set the bandsaw down first on the line that I've drawn. And I'm gonna move that over. Boom, now I got that centered. Chop that off and then chop the other eight inch section off. Start doing the 45s, which I'll show you guys how to do. We've got our metal. I'm just gonna take a look and see. This is about what it looked like before I cut the 45s in it last time. Um, this is about where it wants to be. And then all you gotta do is just cut the 45 from here. You don't have to do any special measurements. I don't do any special measurements. There's people out there that would, I'm sure, but I don't. I just cut, set the bandsaw to 45, cut along that corner for both sides, do uh, this shape right here. And uh, you pretty much get the result that you're after. Okay, now that I've got that looking that way there are people who are probably very very uh, into safety and uh, the number one thing you don't want happening if you're cutting a 45 with your bandsaw is having too little to grab on luckily um this is just barely enough and it's perfectly fine so i'm gonna just pretend that uh there's no such thing as safety regulations. Now this part's the actually dangerous part. Uh, we basically have nothing for this thing to grab onto anymore. Uh, again, don't really care. Let her rip. Is the nicest looking one I've had. These have all have have all had gaps. This one, basically no gaps at all. So I'm gonna stick a magnet right along this line right there. And it fits in there really, really nicely. So I'm gonna set you guys up again. Welding gloves graciously decided to uh, not run away this time. do not look good but uh those ones are pretty much flush so you don't really notice but these ones are kind of sticky out because i'm gonna have to uh do some grinding thanks to metal warping 
Um, this has got a bigger gap on this side, unfortunately. Now I gotta make the engine stand portion of the portion that makes the engine stand up. So I gotta take measurements again. I know that the rear of the engine is a seven and an eight bolt pattern. So I gotta build that into this. So that right there is the rear engine bolt up. It's a seven and an eight across center to center bolt pattern. And essentially I have to somehow find a way to get that bolt pattern here on, onto this stand, which is now finished. And get that centered you know put square so that we can swap out and put in whatever engine we want to and my idea for this is to have just this bolt in into the center so that you can adjust it and then put essentially any engine cradle for any lawnmower engine not just the 22 and a half horse v-twin because i'm pretty sure those bushings are v-twin specific i would like it to just be this bolt pattern so that it's for essentially any lawnmower. Um, so I'm gonna try and figure out a way to do that, the most effective way to do that. So the basic design I've come up with is this sort of cradle, reverse cradle type deal. It's gonna be angle supported right there. And it's gonna hang that cradle down with the same bolt pattern. Um, and what's gonna do is just hold it nice and steady and also be interchangeable between cradles because um, that's a V-twin cradle, it has the rubber bushings. But then there's like the sagged cradles, like that exact same without the bushings, which are for uh, different engines, mostly all the same bolt pattern. But essentially, it's gonna make that piece interchangeable rather than the bolt pattern interchangeable because that's a lot more work. This is the basic design I'm going for. It's more of a clean, you know, there's nothing here, but there's gonna be tons of support here type of deal. Um, I kind of am thinking about doing a reverse cradle, which I'll cut to showing you how that's going to work. Okay. So the engine sits over this right here. This is like an extra support, this tube. And uh, this cradle, engine cradle, will sit inside of it flush to the way it was on the lawnmower uh, to, in such a way that the engine will clear the square tube rack right here. But this still be in line and kind of like that and it'll be interchangeable so you can change these out with uh, different engines versions of the same thing um because lawnmower bolt patterns are the same that's kind of the gist of this video i'm gonna weld this into this stand and start on the reverse cradle design and you're probably asking yourself what are we going to use for the tabs no you weren't asking yourself that but i'm going to tell you the answer anyway iron right here to build a set of tabs that'll flush mount to the stand. Uh, I'm just gonna cut it right now. I'll show you what this thing cuts like for this. It's tight. Yep. Pretty much like it's butter. I'm gonna do is have two tabs you know these things are gonna be the bolster uh, essentially they're bulky themselves so I don't have to build supports I'm gonna be like this and that to support the cradle so you can go under it like that and have holes drilled in them for it so I just put the cradle in tacked it in just so I can know where to put these um, which are gonna go right up under there just like that. And now I know where to put it so I can tack these up C sections. I can tack them right there and right there and break. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to break this up just like that. Tack these in, break this up because um, these are super thin tacks. And then this will have the holes drilled in it. I'll drill the holes in it with that thing. And then, um, yeah. It'll be done. So that is the end of part one. We've got this free floating. So essentially it just sticks right in there. And you can, I'm not sure, I'm debating on whether or not making it able to slide back and forth as well. 
um, for just, you know, even more adjustment. I could definitely do that. Um, but this is part one, all done. This thing isn't necessarily finished because it doesn't have the braces right there. But when it gets the big long bar braces going, um, then this side will be done. But uh, by the time you guys see any of this again, this will be done and I'll be working on the front side of the mount. So see you guys in part two.